Um, so I was gonna do the whole thing training 80s montage style, but the only day that I was able to get out to the barn to film, it is pouring rain. Um, you might be able to hear it on the roof of the trailer. So I figured, eh, I'll do what I can. Hope you enjoyed the first part of the video. It was a lot of fun to make. Um, but the first thing I really wanted to talk about, and I'll bring all my actual, you know, archery equipment back in a second to talk more about it, but is it's tack. Um, so a lot of folks, when they're first starting out, and when we're first talking to people about starting mounted archery, one of the first questions that I get asked is, well, is, is this a Western sport or is this something I can do in my English saddle? Uh, so I figured I'd show you guys what I use. And right now all of my tack is in my trailer um, because of the COVID restrictions at my barn. We're not allowed to keep it in the tack room. So I, I hope there's enough light in here to show you guys. Um, but this is right now my primary go-to saddle. It is a Wintech synthetic dressage saddle. Um, and that is because I'm fortunate enough that it fits both of my horses. Um, this is also a Katego dressage pad. Um, I love these things, they're expensive, but it's moisture wicking. You pull this off of a hot horse, the bottom side is dry and the top side is soaking wet. It's really cool to see that happen. Um, but underneath here is Thunder's specific saddle. There it is. And that is a Wintech Western saddle. It actually fits me a little bit better than the dressage right now um, because my keister is a lot larger than it should be. Um, but this saddle is actually belongs to my boyfriend, Jim. It's his, but I use it occasionally. Um, I should say I use all my saddles occasionally because I'm also kind of a lazy person. So if I'm just practicing at home or just popping up for a short ride, I don't tack up at all. I just go bareback because it's a lot easier, especially when you have a large horse. Um, and this is Gigi or Giggles saddle, primary saddle. This is a Tucker Endurance saddle. Um, so to answer the questions of what saddle can be used, yes all of them doesn't matter what you have endurance dressage close contact um like i said i do a lot of my riding bareback because i'm lazy my helmet this is an unbranded hand-me-down which has seen better days i need a replacement so if you have a favorite helmet drop me the brand and the um oh hey it does have a brand it's euro light um but yeah, drop me a line in the comments. Let me know what you're wearing and why you like it because I really need a new one. But it has a sticker on the inside. That is a raccoon that one of my instructors put in there when I was a teenager um, to remind me to be cunning while I'm riding and to think things through before I do them. Um, but as far as bridles go, I have sort of a, a large assortment. I have the dressage bridle for Thunder, which is huge. It takes up most of the wall. And then this is... Gigi's dressage bridle because we are getting ready for a dressage competition with her so that's all set up but most of the time I ride in this um this is a natural hackamore so it looks a lot like a rope halter but it does have the added makati rein so I can do groundwork and then jump on and go and it sounds like someone's getting caught in the mud right outside um so that is my tack room my tack area for my horses, most of which I don't even use anyway because I'm too lazy to pull it out and put it on. You guys want to meet two amazing archery horses? You guys definitely want to meet two amazing archery horses. So Thunder is a 17-2 hand Percheron gelding and Gigi, also known as Giggles, is an I don't know how tall she is but she's actually my size so it works out pretty well and she's a uh, Hofflinger, quarter horse, Arab, we don't know. She's a great horse. And now for the fun stuff. 
the actual archery gear. My arm guard um, actually did not come from an archery company. It came from a leathersmith, Griffin's Leatherworks, amazing artisans. I have very simple tastes, so I went with black and brown two-tone with the Celtic closure buttons. But if you are looking for anything leather, custom or not, from armor to belts to mug straps to books to you name it, I will drop a link to everybody's stuff in the comment section at the bottom. Uh, so if you're interested in any of this stuff, I will put links to it in the comment section. And next is my quiver, which is also from Steve. Uh, he made this, whoops, it's all tangled up. He made this for me. So this holds 11 arrows, and you'll notice that I am missing my belt strap. That was accidental. I just ran out of the house without grabbing it. So um, when I did my shooting video earlier, um, I didn't have all my straps on. It was rather interesting. But this is an amazing quiver. I can't say enough good things about it. I am also playing around with trying to make my own, but I'm not there yet. So using Steve's, love Steve's, highly recommend that quiver. Next is my shooting glove. This came from Lancaster Archery and it's about 20 bucks on their website. I'll also put a link to the shooting glove in the comments. It's kangaroo leather, so it's already soft when you get it, but with a little bit of conditioner and use, it breaks in so quickly and really molds to your hand and it just feels so good. So I have that. This one has actually, they hold up really well too. My other one I had for three years and used it three to five times a week and it's still going. And I just bought myself a new one because I figure I better have a backup. Um, this is the guard I use on my shooting hand. This came from Canyon with Nomad Warriors. And you'll see where all of my fletchings hit my, my hand when I shoot. So I'd rather have them hit this this guard than my actual hand. So they've really saved me some, some blood on my fletchings. Love that. And once again, minimal investment, maximum advantage. And the Velcro, both of these have Velcro, Velcro closure on the wrists. So they're a little bit more adjustable than you would think. My arrows also came from Nomads. These are um, 31 inch long, 500 spine bamboo look so they're not the bamboo ones but they are the bamboo look arrows um, you can get a dozen of them from canyon he has all kinds of different colors for the fletchings i am using screw in field tips and the reason i go with the screw in is i change them constantly um, let me see if i can get this to focus a little bit better but there we go um, so mine you can see now that they're screw in and this one I'm probably gonna change soon because it is a little bit dirty, but it's also got a couple of little rust marks on it. And I'm just kind of weird about stuff. So I will change that out very, very soon. The knocks that I'm using right now, oh, focus, yay. These are U knocks. Um, I also use Vermils, but these are quickly becoming my favorite. And I haven't had a chance yet to try the castle knocks those look really cool so four fletchings on those and my bow now this bow also came from nomad but this is their laminate bow not their fiberglass um, so if you're thinking about upgrading yourself and you're currently using a fiberglass do it go for the laminate bow oh my god it's focusing on my frayed string um, these are made by Ali bow and they are absolutely beautiful. Let me see if I can zoom in on some of this um, just amazing craftsmanship here. Take a look at this bow. See if I can get in kind of close. I mean it is just absolutely gorgeous and it shoots so smooth. I mean, just unbelievably smooth. Beautiful. Now the string that I have on here right now is the one that came with the bow. However, I also have three backup sets. You can never be too prepared. So I have three backup sets that were also made by Eli. And once again, amazing product. 
none of this is outrageously priced for what it is. The laminate bows are on the pricier side, so if you're just starting out, you've never done this before, or you're within your first few months, and you wanna buy your first bow, go with the fiberglass. You're gonna make a few mistakes. It's gonna get stepped on, left in the rain. You're, you're gonna have those oops moments. But when you're a little bit more mindful of how to keep and care for your equipment, and you're shooting well enough that you've decided to upgrade yourself and you're looking for that next step up, go for these laminate bows. You can choose your own color. There's color options available. Canyon's amazing to work with, and this bow is just so nice and so smooth to shoot. And the last thing I'm gonna show you, which is gonna be a little odd, and everybody in my club is probably laughing hysterically right now, um, this is beeswax. Um, it is mixed with something else that makes it smell absolutely divine. I can't remember what it is right now, but um, this stuff I use to clean, condition, and waterproof all of my equipment, everything. I use it to wax my bow strings. I use it to wipe down my arrows and my bow. At the end of the day, it wicks off any excess moisture sitting on the surface and conditions it and helps waterproof it for future use. And leather, it makes your leather so incredibly soft. And I'll show you if I can pop the can open with one hand here. Here we go. I'll show you what it looks like. This little can I originally bought at an expo for 20 bucks, but then I found it at my local tack shop too. And I am ecstatic that it's at my local tack shop. Um, but this little can lasts me almost a year and I use it on my saddles. I use it on my boots, I use it on my archery equipment, all over the place. I also use it on my camping gear. Um, it smells heavenly. But you just take a swab of this on your fingers, rub your hands together, and the warmth from your hands turns it into an almost liquid substance. And then rub it on your tack, your equipment, your boots, whatever you're using it on. And then just wipe off the excess. And it also leaves your hands feeling super, super soft. Very, very nice, yes. I would shake your hand right now, but you know, social distancing. Thanks for tuning in to another Gearbox Meet Your Board Member Monday. And I hope you enjoyed my video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. I'd love to get you in touch with some new equipment, improved equipment, or answer any questions you may have about the equipment that I use. Don't forget to drop me a comment about what kind of helmet you use. I need a new one and I want your recommendations. So next I challenge, sorry, it's a random generator. Give me a second. Uh, nope, we're doing it again because it said Diana and she's going to do one anyway, so that doesn't count. Rowena Nelson, you're next. Show me what is in your gearbox. <laughs>